Hey, what's up guys? Kind of Conservative Engineer, aka PE Exam Poppy. Just kidding, nobody calls me that. Let us do a continuation of the previous problem I did where NCS was nice enough to give you the um, the beam, which we got a W16 by 100. All right, they gave you the max moment, which is 3,000 kip foot. And they just said, find the maximum bending stress. Now we have two equations. We use this first equation, this uh, bending stress FB equals the moment over the section modulus, but I know there's gonna be a few of you guys gonna be like, oh, but P exam poppy, I like the other equation better because there's C in it, and C is the perpendicular distance from the neutral axis to the outermost fiber, and it makes me sound smart. I'm like, listen, all right, all right, stop complaining. All right, we're gonna use this. We're gonna do the same problem with the other equation, even though I think it, you know, it's a little, it's a little more uh, challenging because it has the extra variable. But all right, we'll satisfy whatever you guys uh, want. All right, so again, same process. They give you pretty much everything you need. You just have to find C and you just have to find I, right? So C is the, again, perpendicular distance from neutral axis to the outermost fiber. So what is, we just have to find the height or the depth of the beam, all right? Very, very easy. So W16 by 100, you're just gonna go to your steel manual. Table 1-1 of your steel manual. All right, it's gonna be at the beginning of your steel manual. So, all we have to do is find the depth. So W16 by 100, where is the depth? Well, the depth is right here. Check it out, 17, right? Um, yeah, very, very easy. You found D, D is the depth. All right, if you look at uh, like right over here where this gives you like the variables and what it represents, D is the depth or the height of the beam. So 17. So that is going to be your depth and all C is. In this case, super, super easy. It's going to be just half of that. C equals 17 divided by 2, which is just 8.5 inches. Very easy. Now all you got to do is find the I. Right? So the I, again, steel manual, handy dandy steel manual. And where is the I? Well, the I is actually right here. Remember, we go to W16 by 100, and we're gonna go, 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 all the way to the next page, and I is right here at 1490. And then, remember once again, there's two I's, there's the one about the x-axis, one about the y-axis, so the one is the strong axis, one is the weak axis, and just to go very quickly, you guys should review this, but all right, I drew two scenarios. So this scenario right here is your strong axis, right? Because when you have this load going like this, it's going to bend about the x-axis. So we're going to use the moment of inertia about the x-axis. Strong axis because in this case, the beam is very strong, okay? It could withstand a lot. This load has to go through the top flange, this web, the bottom flange. It has a lot of work to do. Whereas in this case, all right, this is the weak axis. Because when the load is coming perpendicular to the web, it's going to bend about the y axis. All right, so then this is you use uh, I, Y. This is, the weak, this is the weak axis because this load going like this doesn't have to do much work. It just has to basically wreck this thin little piece of web. And this beam is done. This beam is a weak beam right now. So it's the weak axis. So we're going to use I, X. Right, so I, X. And rule of thumb. You're probably always going to use IX, right? Um, so you go, 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 go all the way to here. So 1490 is your moment of inertia. So let's write that down. Your moment of inertia is 1490. I equals 1490 inches to the fourth. And so this will, and instead of using the, the formula circled in red, we're going to use the formula circled in um, blue, not the best circle, but you guys get the idea. So keep it consistent. We're gonna we're gonna write this in blue. So your bending stress is m c over i. M is remember three thousand kip pounds, but we have to keep it consistent, right? Instead of um, ah, did I say kip pounds? Wow! I listen. It's two a.m. in the morning. I am lacking some sleep. It's kip. Uh, foot. <laughs> I'm so stupid. So in order to go from foot to kip inch, you multiply by 12. 
and now you're going to multiply by C. Remember C we found earlier was 8.5. And we're going to divide this by your moment of inertia about the x-axis, the strong axis, 1490. This should equal or come near 205.71. Let's uh, check our calculator. So we have 3000, right, which is your moment, times 12, which is the conversion from um, foot to inches, times 8.5, which is C, divided by 1490, and you get 205.36, uh, 0.37. Right, so you get 205.37, and this is going to be in K per square inch, or KSI. And that's it. You see it's very similar to this one right here. So you could use either either or. You could use the um, uh, the bending stress is moment over section modulus or the bending stress is moment times C divided by moment of inertia. And you'll get pretty much the same answer. This just takes that extra step of finding C. So yeah, there you go. Same answers. Very, very simple. Just to reiterate what we did. And CS gave you the beam, the max moment. We found C by going to the steel manual and finding the beam, finding the depth, dividing it by two, because it's a symmetrical beam, neutral axis is in the middle, and then to find I, again, we found the beam, and we went over to um, the I about the x-axis, because it is bending about the x-axis. And we just did a simple plug and chug, and we got the answer, 205.37 kips per um, inches squared, and again, it's multiple choice. If your answer is in pounds per inch squared, PSI, all you have to do is just multiply this answer by 1,000, and that is it. So I hope this helps, guys. I'll see you guys next time. You guys have a nice day.